Well, here I am on a, a lovely lake. It's uh, a bit breezy, but it's not too bad. It's about eight degrees, and I'm going after rough and gudgeon. And uh, I feel a bit sorry for uh, young young people these days because usually they start on on big carp waters, and the first fish is usually a carp. And if it's around about 15, 20 pound, if they catch anything smaller, they're like, mm, it's only small fry. And uh, it really takes the magic out of fishing. I mean, when I was a boy, I, uh, I started fishing for gudgeon. Uh, I think my first fish was actually probably a little minnow. And then I started catching roach and perch and progressed onto carp and tench. And uh, there's nothing magical than catching your first fish and it's like a roach or a gudgeon or something like that. It really stays in the memory. So uh, the people that start on these instant carp waters, I mean, I like carp fishing, don't get me wrong, but uh, when you're starting on carp and your biggest carp is probably, say like your first fish, is 20 pound, everything else is gonna seem small fry, isn't it? You know, but uh, that's how it goes. Sign of the times and all that. But um, I do like going for carp, especially on the float, on the bread, which I'm going to be trying this summer. See if we can get to a 20 pounder on the float. Yeah, so when I'm fishing, I make sure I've got some quality bait. I've got some nice red and white maggots here, which the gudgeon seem to like, and uh, every other fish. And for the rough, I've got some dendrobeaners. Now this tub is full of dendrobeaner worms and they're all good quality worms. Look at those. That'll last me a couple of weeks, maybe three weeks. And as I say, um, they're a very, very good bait for rough and perch. And this tub cost me around about six quid. And it probably lasts me about three weeks. Yeah, when you're going mini species fishing, it's always handy to have a good uh, set of um, jewellery skills with you. I got these off uh, eBay. It's a Will Star. Cost me about five quid. And uh, so they are pretty accurate, are these scales. As I say, you can put your, your fish on there, a gudgeon or a rough. And as I say, you can do it in ounces or grams. These are very handy scales to have, especially when you're talking, I mean like a stickleback, if it's so many grams, this will be able to tell you and you'll be able to see whether you've got a record. And as I say, these are, are real accurate, these ones. I made sure I did get the, uh, the best ones for the job and they fit in your pocket, no problem. So there's no weight to the scales and uh, if I do catch a record, I want some really, really good scales. Right, so what I'm going to do now, got my pole, I'm going to plumb the depth. Should be around about five, six feet, just in the margins. Nice depth. I've had some carp from uh, just down near this spot before. Well, it's around about four feet. It's not a bad depth. I'm gonna start with a white maggot. See if a big gudgeon would like that.
And remember, little and often is the key. Yeah, I've already seen some uh, perch spawning, so it's a good sign. Well, that's a better roach. Lovely fish. On maggot, as I said, they're all in perfect condition. Right, let's put it back just down the side. Bit better roach. Yeah, it's a nice fish. Yeah, they're in superb condition, these roach. I mean, they're not big roach, as roach go, but uh, nice fish. And uh, I've had about 15 of these this morning. No gudging yet, but I'm hoping so. Put this one back and let's go and see if we can get some more fish. We finally got a good gin. There we go. We finally got a gonk, which is what I wanted. It's a nice one as well. I'm gonna weigh him now. Well, there's my first good gin of the day. And it weighs 1.17 ounces. It's a nice gudgeon, is that one? I say his tail's just hanging off there, but it's a lovely, lovely fish. And I say it's always worth when you go in specimen hunting to get some of these jewellery scales, and then you can get a, an accurate reading of your fish. I mean, look at the coloration on this gudgeon. You've got blues in there. You've got silvers. You've got greys, fin perfect. Look at the fins, absolutely lovely. Lovely gudgeon. Aren't you Mr Gudgeon? Love gudgeon. First started catching, my first fish was a gudgeon I think, from the local stream. Let's put it back. Bye bye Mr Gudgeon. See you again. Straight down into the depths. Here we have a friend in my swim. Mr Goose has uh, come to have a look. I've got some casters I don't really need, so I think I'm gonna I'm gonna feed him some casters. Look. He's loving these casters, look.
There you go. Don't say I never give you nothing. There you go. Wildlife when you're fishing. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, just keep feeding, little and often, and I'm bringing the roach in, fingers crossed the gudgeon will follow. Well, peace is broken, somebody's just caught on the lake with a, a chainsaw, cutting a few trees down. Well, you want peace and quiet and what happens? Still, I'm going to fish on and hope for a big gudgeon. Another gudgeon. This one's quite a nice fish. This one's bigger than the last one, but I've noticed it's uh, blind in one eye. I'll show you in a minute. There we are. Another Gudgeon, apart from it being blind, it's in good condition. I love the way the tint in the sunlight, absolutely beautiful fish. This is what everybody should start fishing for, beautiful. Here he is, here's my Gudgeon. And you can see he's blind in one eye, bless him. Still a lovely, lovely fish. Lovely scaling pattern on these Gudgeon. And you can see how fat they are. In good good condition, these fish. Right, let's weigh him. Yeah, he's a little bit bigger than the last one. 123, so that's 1.23 ounces. And you can see how thick he is across the back. Lovely fish. Let's hope there's some bigger ones to come. Sorry about the noise, but he's cutting the uh, trees down again. See you later, Mr. Gudgeon. Off you go to your watery home. Another big gudgeon. Well, there's my gudgeon. It's not as big as I thought. It's one ounce, 
18 grams. A lovely fish all the same. I thought it might have gone a bit bigger than that. Yeah, this one is quite a fat, fat gudgeon. You know, I love the coloration on gudgeon. That'll look fantastic. Quite fat, in nice condition. Fin perfect. There's my gudgeon, just resting in my net. Now it's time for the release. Yeah, now the sun's started to come out, we're starting to get a few more bites, it's starting to warm up a bit. Which is good. So, fingers crossed we'll get a big gudgeon, a bigger one. Missed that one. Well, another nice gudgeon on a white maggot this time. Yeah, another beautiful gudgeon. I love it how it glistens in the sunlight. What a lovely fish. I love gudgeon. Right, let's weigh this one and see what it goes. I think it's probably about close to two ounces, maybe a bit more. Yeah, here's my gudgeon, another one, another good one. You see the little barbules coming down from their, their mouth, they look like a, a small barbel. But that coloration on them is absolutely lovely. And look at the markings on the tail, beautiful. Another fat one, just turn him over, look, look at how fat. That is, that is a nice fish. Right, let's put him on the scales. See what he weighs, or she. Well, 119 it says there, on these scales. I know the tail's hanging off. It's not big enough for the tray, is it? Another big gudgeon. Here's my super gudgeon. 
going back in. A little bit of cradling. You put up a a good fight that fish. I mean, you can see how thick he is across his back. It's really thick. Yeah, he's got a bit of a marking on him, on his uh, back of his head there. Someone had a go at him, something like that. Down into the depths. Right, I've decided I'm going to put a, a dendrobina worm on and let's see if we can catch a rough because I think the gudgeon have gone off. There we are. There's me dendrobina worm. Hopefully for a big rough. I'm going to put it in the same position, see what happens. See if that'll get me a rough. Well, it's not a rough, but it's a little perch. Yeah, perch like the uh, the worms as well, and there's plenty of these little fellas in here. Aren't they angry? Perch. Lovely. We'll put him back just down in the side, and then uh, what affects the other fish. Yeah, just caught this lovely coloured perch and you can see how fat this perch is. Look at the belly on that. Getting ready for spawning. There we go. Let's see this one go back. There we go. Down into the depths. Yeah, it's so frustrating when you know there's rough in here and every time you get a bite on the worm a small perch around about four to five ounces grabs hold. I've had rough in the summer up to about four ounces and that's on a size six hook with three worms on. And now I've scaled down 14 hook, small dendrobina, I can't seem to get one. It's absolutely driving me nuts. But uh, I shall keep trying. Yeah, a good place to find gudgeon and rough is right in amongst these branches. This is where they like to hide and it's deep in this peg as well. It's around about 12 foot. Nice misty morning. Ah. 
Another good gin. Yeah, this one's a nice fish. Got to be getting on for over 30 grams, I think. There we are. Another nice gudgeon. On the float, in the margins, using maggot. Lovely. Aren't they pretty? I think I'd rather catch one of these than a carp. To be honest, it takes me back to my childhood days on my local stream. <laughs> right, Mr. Gudgeon, let's see how much you weigh. Yeah, that's a nice gudgeon. 29.4 grams. Just over an ounce. Lovely fish. I mean, look at the colorations on this particular fish. The blues. The whites. Fin perfect as well. Got a bit of a belly. Lovely. Right, let's see if we can get another one. Bye bye, Gudgeon. We'll see you again. Oh, the geese and ducks have uh, come to see me now. The geese will be uh, laying their eggs soon. Well, that's it for the uh, the gudgeon. No really big gudgeon, but I got some nice gudgeon. But for the life of me, I couldn't hook a, a rough, even though I know they're in here and there's some big ones in here. But uh, never mind, there's always next time. <laughs>